Hey there, my savvy home buyers and sellers. This is Jeff O'Leary, the Village Guru, and welcome to the April 2023 Sarasota and Manatee County real estate market update. In this video, we'll go over the latest stats released by the real estate board, and we'll also go through breaking news and what's happening in the real estate market. And finally, we're gonna look at supply and demand, because ultimately, as a buyer or seller, you wanna know what's gonna happen in the near to mid future so you can make an informed decision. And in order to do that, we need to look at the numbers in great detail because there's a lot of noise going on out there. So if you're a buyer, seller, or investor, you're not going to want to miss this episode. So let's go. Spring is in the air. Spring has always been about new beginnings and transformations. It's a season that symbolizes starting fresh and starting over. So when it comes to looking at real estate in Sarasota and Manatee, it comes down to a tale of two ideals, depending on which way you look at it. So when we look at year over year statistics, sales have declined approximately 16.3% compared to the same time last year. However, if we look at January to February, sales have actually increased, showing that the market is is starting to pick up. Now, it's also important to keep in mind when comparing year over year sales that in February of 2022, we were at the peak of the madness. So obviously trying to compare this time versus that time last year, it's a really hard comparison, especially because as we go further into the spring, you're gonna start to see the numbers come down in 2022. And if we continue in 2023 going up, they'll actually look better just by comparing year over year. In terms of real estate investing, while I use year over year to get a gauge of what the market's doing, I always go and look at the numbers and what's been happening month over month to give me a better idea. Now, when we're looking at sales, when you compare February of 2023 versus January, sales were actually up almost 30%, showing that we're, as we head into the spring market, sales are starting to pick up from the lows we had in the fall. And you have to remember, on top of high inflation and a lot of things going on in our market, we also dealt with a hurricane, which did have an impact over the coming months. So based on those numbers, I see that our sales are starting to pick up, which is a good sign. Now, when it comes to pending sales, meaning properties that actually went under contract in February, February, they're much closer to what we saw at the same time last year, which should translate into higher sales over the next few months as they start to close. And also keep in mind that pending sales in February were up over 10% compared to January of this year. When it comes to the supply of homes available, we're looking at approximately three month worth of supply in Sarasota and Manatee County. And this is about three times higher than what we saw last year in 2022, where we were well under one month's worth of inventory. When you look at real estate over the course of 20 years, three months is still not that high of a supply. In fact, we're still in a seller's market territory. It's just, it's not gonna be the same as when there was basically nothing available for sale and everything was selling in a bidding war. So keep in mind that if you're looking for a massive price drop in terms of housing, you need to see a lot of supply on the market. So we're looking at seven, eight months worth of supply and that has to be continued over a long period of time to really see a sustained price drop. Now, when it comes to new listings on market, new listings actually declined between January and February of this year. However, they are a little bit higher than they were at the same time last year. So when we combine this with the fact that there are more homes on the market and we have a couple of months more worth of supply, you can see that the supply is not drastically increasing anymore. We just have more homes that have been sitting on the market longer, probably due to being overpriced. However, if sales continue to increase as we think they will, then you're going to see that inventory slowly start to go down. So either way, it's something that we need to continue watching. Now, when it comes to home prices, what every home buyer and seller wants to know, single family homes are up approximately 6.9% compared to the same time last year, while condos and townhouses are up over 8% compared to the same time last year. Now I'll admit, while we're not seeing skyrocketing prices like we saw in 2020 and 2021, what that tells me is that sellers and builders are holding firm on their prices, they're confident that whatever turmoils we've been going through in the market, they're willing to wait it out and they're not giving as much as maybe some buyers have expected the market to come down. At the end of the day, we still need to look at supply and demand in order to truly understand what we might expect in the near future. And we're going to get to that later in the video. And now for our next segment, which is breaking news. And what can I say? The news nowadays, there is so much going on, so much craziness. 
I don't even know where to start. So for this segment, to keep this video very short, I'm gonna focus on three things that I think will have the most impact on the real estate market and what we can expect in the upcoming future. So the first subject I do wanna talk about is inflation. Now, here we go, looking at an article from Routers just released today showing that US consumer spending retreats in February and inflation is starting to cool. So if you start looking around online, looking at the news, you can see that while inflation is still higher than it should be, it is coming down from the peak that we saw last summer where things were just starting to get out of control. Unlike other recessions and other times in history, I don't think it's so much that people did not have the money to buy a house, but just that nobody could give a straight answer and that causes a lot of buyers to kind of pull back and, and take a wait and see approach. But as we can see, inflation is coming down and now there is speculation and talk about what the Fed is gonna go do next. Are they actually gonna continue to raise interest rates or are they gonna put it on hold for now? So this is something that we need to continue to monitor. My guess is as we get further into the year, the interest rate hikes are gonna stop and we might actually see some softening of it. But again, it all comes down to economic data and what's going on in this, the economy as a whole. For the next topic I wanna to talk about, it is the bank failures that happened over the last couple of weeks. So I believe there was a couple of small banks that failed and it can cause a ripple effect because nothing is on its own. Everything in our banking system and financial system worldwide is interconnected. Now. I'm not an economist, and if you wanna go on YouTube, you can watch 500 videos from doom and gloom. I'm not here to do that actually today. All I'm gonna say on that is we had a couple of banks that went sideways, and the Fed is now moving very quickly to address that issue in order to have confidence in the banking system. I mean, because we need it in order to buy things and get paid and everything else. Just like Warren Buffett said, only when the tide goes out, do you discover who's been swimming naked. They were probably doing things that they shouldn't do. Now, another question to ask is, with those banks having problems, is the Fed gonna continue to raise interest rates the way that they have been in the past? Now, if you go online and look for a Opinion. Nobody knows what the Fed's going to do and nobody really has the right advice. So I can just look at the headlines here on Google and the first person that says to prevent more bank runs, the Fed should pause rate hikes. You got JP Morgan saying the Fed will pause rate hikes. But then if I go down, something's broke, but the Fed expects to push rates higher from CNBC. Or Barron's is saying, don't bet on a Fed pause. Why a rate hike is still likely. The news is there to get you to read. They work off the back of our brain in order the fear instinct. There is something to be said about getting your attention. Now, what I'll say about this is really simple. This is not the first time a bank has failed and it will not be the last time that a bank has failed. The economy as a whole has continued regardless. I think there's already moves being made to shore it up to make sure that this does not continue. So that's all I'm gonna say on the bank failures and listen if you're watching this on YouTube please feel free to leave a comment but I'm not going to get into it I mean a lot of people have their opinions on what's going on right now and that's absolutely fine but as I see it this plays a part in the short-term real estate market cycle but in terms of the long-term outlook I'll still go back to supply and demand because that's ultimately going to tell us what housing prices are gonna do in the long term. All right, so for our final subject of breaking news, we're just gonna look at home sales across the country. And here's the National Association of Realtors. And they're reporting that home sales grew for the third straight month, up almost a percent in February, which kind of mimics what's been going on in Sarasota and Manatee. If I scroll down in the article, here we have the chief economist for NAR saying that existing home sales, pending contracts, and new home construction pending contracts have turned the corner and climbed for the past three months. So just like almost every other area in the country, the fall was much slower because we were dealing with a lot of uncertainty. But as the Fed has made moves to shore up and Inflation. We're getting used to this economy that's changed from the pandemic. There was all kinds of money flying around. I think the market as a whole is starting to get used to this normal. And having said that, people still need to buy and sell homes. So we're seeing the market stabilize, which is a good thing if you're a home buyer and a good thing for a home seller because a lot of people were speculating on much worse things that were gonna happen six months ago that never actually really panned out. 
And for our last segment in this video, I wanna go over the fundamental of supply and demand because this is ultimately what I look at if I'm trying to make a prediction for myself as to what to expect the market to do. Remember, nobody, I mean nobody, has a crystal ball in real estate. That includes the economists, the banks, and the news media, realtors, people, nobody. In fact, if we knew and we had a crystal ball, we'd all be billionaires and we wouldn't be here right now. We'd be on some island somewhere living the life. All you can do is look at supply and demand because ultimately that'll give you the indicator of what's going on in your market. So here we are looking at a chart based off the statistics from the Sarasota and Manatee counties combined for single family sales. And what we're looking at are new listings versus pending sales. The reason I like looking at pending sales is it's more recent. So yes, while not 100% of pending sales go through, the vast majority will. And the problem with looking at real estate statistics is a sale was actually agreed upon maybe a month, two months, or three months in the past. So if we want to get the most up-to-date data, then looking at pending sales is the best because that'll tell us what to expect in two to three months time. So here we go. I've been tracking this chart since the start of the pandemic. And when you look at the lines, the blue line represents new listings while the red line represents pending sales. And what we're looking for when it comes to supply and demand is a variance between the two. So if you see a lot of new listings coming on and the sales are going down, that's going to indicate to me that you're going to have much more inventory coming on market and there's a potential for prices to soften. So for instance, if we start off at the beginning of the pandemic, you can see that pending sales actually started to rise while new listings weren't. And that was because the demand started to ramp up for people coming to Florida, for buying houses, interest rates were super low, but at the same time, people didn't wanna sell. So it caused prices to really skyrocket. And that's kind of the story that happened all through 2020 and into 2021. Now, once we got about midway into 2021, new listings started to go up which was fine. The market started to catch up. Uh, people started to cash in on their price increases and you saw the supply chain start to loosen up a little bit and builders were able to bring more online. Everything's kind of stayed the same until we got into the spring of 2022, which was where the news started to reflect the fact that inflation was starting to get really high. And at this point, you saw a lot of sellers jump on market well, at the same time, sales started to go down. And this is reflected in the big spread between the blue and the red lines. And I've gone over this in previous videos. However, as we got through and into the fall, you can see a sharp drop in the amount of listings coming more in line with the sales. After October, you can see a drop in pending sales. But you got to remember, we were faced with a hurricane at that time, which had an impact and also what was going on in the market. So naturally, it wasn't a big surprise that sales did go down as low as they were. However, new listings also continued to trend lower, showing that sellers were also not moving. Now, fast forward into December and January, we can see that both listings and pending sales are starting to spike. And actually in February, they're almost converging, which means we're not having as many listings as we need and sales are trending upwards. So looking at this, I don't see any big gap. So I'm gonna predict that things are gonna stay relatively the same. Now, in the real estate market, just in my personal experience working right now, I can see that builders are pulling back the incentives that they were offering in the fall. They seem to be more confident. There's less move-in ready inventory available out there, which means that prices are holding strong. It doesn't seem like there's any fire sales out there. There was a softening of prices and that occurred over last year, but right now we're seeing things steady up. In the future, again, if there's not enough listings coming online, you're gonna see that pressure on home prices to go up. I like this chart because month over month we can continue to track things and see what's going to happen and also what to expect in terms of actually close sales two to three months down the line. Well there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this April 2023 Sarasota Manatee real estate market update. If you have any questions about buying or selling a home let me know. I'm Jeff O'Leary the village guru. Let's get you moving.